Hi everyone, welcome back to this channel and today I'm going to show you the way to measure a very low powered signal such as GPS signal. So we are talking about anything lower than minus 140 dBm. So to put in perspective, the 5G signal that you are currently using from your locations, we are talking about a kilometer or two kilometer away from base station, it's about minus 100 dBm. So minus 140 dBm is considerably very low and definitely there are challenges comes along with it and one of it is the limitations of Philfox that we're going to use. If you set up Philfox the right way by turning on the preamp, lowering down the attenuations and lowering down the resolution bandwidth, at most that we can get is roughly about minus 120 dBm if you're lucky and with a good receiver antenna. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we're going to achieve that measurements by using an external amplifier. So this is how my physical setup is. This is how the setup would look like when we want to characterize the amplifier. As you can see here, I have the amplifier which works between 1 MHz to 2 GHz. And according to the spec, the amplification is about 64 dB gain, but that is across a 2 GHz bandwidth. And the power supply that's needed is 12 volt, and you can see that it's connected to the fuel fox to power that up. So the first step is to turn on the power supply from fuel fox to power on that amplifier. I'm going to show you the connections that's needed to characterize that amplifier. So you can either use a network analyzer mode, an A mode, but in my case, I don't really care about the face. And furthermore, with 64 dB gain, we might need the external attenuations out here for an A mode because it will saturate the ADC but in SA mode we are able to change the attenuations internal so I'll go with the second mode just click here and I'm going to show you a clearer picture later after I show you the setup physical setup so as you can see we can pump up from port 1 and measure at port 2 so this amplifier the input is at the bottom and the output is on top of it so I'm going to connect that so this is how it looks like after the connections. So we have the power, we have the DC power supply and the input and the output. So it's connected back to the fuel fox and the fuel fox will be pumping out a signal from input and measure the output and to get the gain. I go back to the screen and we'll show you a clearer view of how it looks like. So let's go through how can we characterize the amplifier. So what you're seeing right now is the view of a field fox. Let's preset it. Let's start from the beginning. So let's go to mode, spectrum analyzer. Because we want to measure a GPS signal, a civilian band. So we are looking at 1.57542 gigahertz. So let's set the start and stop frequency within that 80 meg range. So let's put the start frequency as 1.57142 gigahertz and the stop is 1.57942 so we have a span of 80 megahertz and let's turn on the marker so right in the middle is 1.57542 gig which is right in the middle of the GPS signal for civilian so the next thing we want to do is to change the resolution bandwidth Let's go to bandwidth. Let's set it up to 300 hertz. So as you can see, without turning on the preamp, we are hitting about minus 115. If we turn on the preamp, we are hitting about minus 124, which is all right. And we can move it further down if we want to. So we are looking at minus 130-ish, which is still not quite near to the GPS level. So I'm going to turn off the preamp. I'm going to turn on that 
attenuations by 15 dB because as you can see my amplifier is a 64 dB gain amplifier so it's going to hit hard on my fuel force to protect my fuel force I'm going to turn on the RF attenuation so the next thing I want to do is to change the input power so let's go to measurement source let's change from CW continuous wave to tracking so that it goes from 1.57142 to 1.57942 and I want to change the source power to minus 40 I won't turn it on yet because my amplifier is not powered up yet so the next thing I want to do is to power up the amplifier if you remember my physical setup I have the DC supplied by the fuel fox so how to turn on the DC part let's go to system system configuration voltage source so I'll change the voltage by default when you turn on the fuel fox it's set to 1 volt so this way you can change your 12 volt that's according to the spec and I want to turn on the status line to make sure I know whether the source is on or off and what's the voltage the currents that are being drawn at that moment so I'm going to turn on the source right now as you can see it moved a bit the noise wall has been lifted up a bit and the voltage source is ready it's drawing some current so it's still within the spec in more than 70 milliamps so the next thing we want to do is to turn on the RF source from port 1 let's go to measure source so we have the source power set up correctly we want to do tracking because we want to go through that whole span of interest then we turn on the source power as you can see it's way above so we're looking at about 2.5 dBm so a quick calculations I'm pumping it at minus 40 assuming that there's no loss on the cable that I'm using and I'm getting output of 2.6 so gain at 1.57542 gig we are looking about 42.6 dB so that's the number we want to remember while we are here I'm going to show you what will happen if we do not put on the R attenuation the way down and you're going to see some ADC over range and the other things that you're going to see is there's a wavy type of signal it shows that the signal is not really clean it might have saturated something I'm going to put it back to 15 dB before it burns the ADC so that's the reason why I'm putting a 15 dB if you have external attenuations you can use that too so the next thing I want to do is to turn off so we have to remember the gain is about 42.6 or we can ground it up to 42.7 dB so let's turn off the source and let's turn off that voltage and then we're going to change the input to the antenna after the calibration done we're going to disconnect the amplifier from port 1 and remember to turn off the source so we're going to connect the antenna to the input of the amplifier to look at signal of interest at the band that we set this is how it looks like the physical connections so that was the physical connections and the next thing I want to do is to turn on the source right now and as you can see the reading is way below let's change the reference level so we are looking at minus 90 which is not really what we are expecting let's turn on the preamp and let's lower down that our tensions to zero and we're still not hitting that sweet spot that we want to one of the reason is we haven't put in the corrections into the calculation right now we know that we have an amplifier to amplify the signal right at the bottom how we're going to do that is to go to scales amplitude let's go to more so external gain is where you're going to put in the gain at one point of interest for example we calculated at 1.57542 gig the gain is 42.7 so you can put it here 42.7 db and you can see that it actually dropped down quite a lot so it's from 102 
to 142, which is roughly there. Granted, there's some effect from the noise, so we can't really get 1 plus 1 equals to 2 type of situation. But it's definitely much better than what we had just now. So the next thing I want to do to make the trace look much more better is to change the detector type. So let's go to trace. So currently it's used auto. So within auto, you can choose any of this automatically, which is our user's control. So because we are looking at a very low power signal, I do recommend to use average. So you can see that once I change your average, it's actually getting lower and we are hitting about minus 140. So one thing to be aware is that when you're using a very high power amplifier, which have a high gain, always make sure that there's no signal within the band of interest. Even though we have a very good pre-selector, but always be aware of the ADC over range message. Then if in doubt, always turn on the RF attenuation. Yes, we will sacrifice the noise floor, but in some way you are protecting your investment. So one more thing I want to show you, just for making sure the offset or the corrections that we put in is correct. I'm going to change back the physical connections from the antenna as an input, and then connect back to the part one of Phil Fox. Before that, let's turn off the power. Let's go to system, voltage, turn it off. So I have connected back uh, the input of the amplifier into part one of the fuel box. So let's turn on the source right now. And this is amplification of the noise flow. Let's turn on the attenuations. Let's turn it to 15. So right now, I have a corrections gain, external gain input here, 42.7, meaning that if I pump in a minus 40 here, the marker reading when it's all settled down, it will be about minus 40 or so, if your corrections is done correctly. Let's do that. So ADC is overload. Let's turn on the attenuation. So let's turn it on. Yep. We definitely need more. Oh, let's turn off the preamp. So we can reduce that a bit. So minus 15 is what we did when we tried to characterize or calibrate the amplifier. I may have used the wrong word when I was showing you the physical connections. It should be called characterization instead of calibration. So as you can see, if my external gain input is correct when you apply minus 40 it should show you minus 40. so this is how the compensation works and also the corrections work so in the event where you want to put in multiple points of gain at different frequency because we know that there is a frequency response for all the active device it won't be flat top across frequency but because our range is so small i choose to ignore it for now but in the event where you want to put multiple points, you can choose to use cable type or antenna type corrections. It's the same thing, it's just na different naming. So what it does is, so you can put in different point and then have different loss with that. You will interpolate that loss or gain. So for gain, it has to be minus. Loss is just a round number. It's a reverse way. So if I want, to turn this off to the 0 dB and I turn on the corrections because my correction is almost the same 42.0, 40, 42.7 let's turn it on it should give you almost the same maybe I change that to 42 minus 42.7 that's what I did same 42.7 Minus 42.7. Okay, I'll click done. And it should be updated. Roughly that, minus 40. So in summary, we can actually use Fieldfox to characterize the amplifier that you have. But again, when you use tracking generator in spec and mode, it only gives you the magnitude information. So it doesn't give you 
the face information, which for our case is not critical. Secondly, you have to gauge around what is the amplification for that amplifier. For my 64 dB maximum, so I have to protect my field fox. So I have to make sure that the signal is very low and I have to turn on the RF attenuations to some high value. 15 dB is a good start. If you're still seeing the ADC over range, time to turn that even higher. Then doing characterization, I don't really preempt because it's an amplifier that we are trying to characterize. And after that, we connect it to the antenna, we turn on both amplifier. So to turn on amplifier, you go to system, system config, voltage. Then we make sure that the source is on or off. The safe practice is always turn off your RF first, then only you turn off that source. In the reverse way, we want to power it up, turn on the source, make sure all the connections is done correctly, turn on the source, then only you turn off the RF power. So hope this helped. Thanks for watching.